The purpose of this video is to show you how to work with integrals that include delta functions. Uh, so the integrals that we're talking about are uh, integrals that look maybe something like this. Say the integral from minus 1 to 1 of cosine t delta t dt. And the reason why we need to do this, um, it tends to get emphasized a lot in signal processing texts. And it's never been clear to me why, because we're going to, at the end of this video, end up with one expression that you're going to look at and say that is so completely silly to even do that. But it turns out to be an essential, I, or an essential component in developing how uh, uh, linear time invariant systems respond to arbitrary inputs. So, uh, yeah, basically by the time uh, we're done today, we'll have a, uh, an identity that is useful in terms of developing the impulse response of a time invariant linear system. So let's see how we would go about uh, evaluating this integral. We'll start by graphing what we have here. And hopefully by the time we're done with the graph, it should be pretty clear. What, uh, what to do with this. So uh, you can see that I've graphed the term cosine of t. A delta function, as you hopefully remember, is a function that is infinitely tall and infinitely narrow in such a way that it has, a, it has a, uh, an area of 1. So the way you typically draw a delta function is a bold-faced arrow. And so at t equals 0, I have this delta function, this guy here. Okay. Now when I multiply these two together, the cosine times the delta, then um, for values of t, uh, anything that is not 0, the delta function is 0. You can see the delta function exists only at 0. So for any values of t that are not 0, I have the delta function equal to 0. And the cosine of t is whatever it is, but 0 times uh, the cosine of t is 0. Okay. So any time, again, for any value of t that the uh, uh, delta function is 0, the product of cosine and t times the delta function is also 0. Now at 0, I have a different situation, and it's actually kind of strange. I have the cosine of t, and again, this would be for t at 0. So this case will be the cosine of 0 times something that's infinitely tall and infinitely narrow in such a way that it has a value or an area of 1. So at uh, 0, uh, basically, this delta function, when I integrate it, is going to give me a value of 1 times the cosine of 0. So basically what happens when I, when I do this integral that goes, in this case, from uh, minus 1 to 1, um, again, for values of t that are not equal to 0, I get 0. For the value of t at 0, I get the integral of the delta function times the cosine of 0. And so I can actually write this. And those of you that are strict mathematicians will cringe when you see this done because uh, this whole delta function thing is really kind of goofy and it took quite a bit of uh, work by mathematicians to get it to the point where it didn't seem like it was too goofy to be true. Okay, so I'll take this cosine of 0 out of the integral and uh, write this as the integral from minus 1 to 1 of a delta function. This guy Again, since the delta function is infinitely tall and infinitely narrow with an area of 1 is 1. So basically, this integral just turns out to be this is the cosine of 0. Okay.
So hopefully that's not too strange. Uh, again, the, the fundamental idea is if I have a delta function times a function and I integrate um, over an interval that includes 0, then the result is just the function evaluated at 0. So that's what I have here, the function cosine evaluated at 0. Now suppose that instead of integrating from minus 1 to 1, I want to integrate from, say, 1 to 3. Okay, so now I'm going to look at the integral from 1 to 3, something like that. Well, this integral is going to be 0 because between 1 and 3, the delta function here is always 0. So I'm taking whatever this cosine is and multiplying it by 0 anywhere in the interval of integration. So here are my limits of integration, 1 to 3. Uh, this interval here, this interval does not include the delta function. So in this case, the integral is just going to be 0. Okay. So if I have, so, so to summarize where we are to this point, if my limits of integration include the place where the delta function is, then it just evaluates the uh, uh, function at the point where the delta function is. If my limits of integration don't include the delta function, then um, I get uh, 0. Okay, so let's uh, perhaps change this, and we've made a big enough mess here that I'm going to get rid of, oh, well, let's just get rid of all of it. So now suppose that I want to integrate from 1 to 3 cosine t delta of t minus 2. Okay, so the thing that's different here is I've added this minus 2. You should hear some ominous music playing in the background. Actually, I wish I had some. That would be kind of fun. Okay, so now the situation is this. I still have my cosine. And I have now my delta function at 2, which, given the way I've drawn my cosine, means that this uh, guy delta function should be right about here. This is at 2. And now I'm integrating from... 1 to 3. Okay. Well, you can see in this case the delta function is located at 2. I'm integrating from 1 to 3. So again, between 1 and 2, the delta function between 1 and 2 is going to be 0. Between 2 and 3, the delta function is also going to be 0. At 2, the delta function is infinitely narrow and infinitely tall in such a way that it has an area of 1. I'm not sure if you're tired of that phrase yet, but I'm getting good at saying it. So, um, this integral just turns out to be the cosine of the function evaluated at the point where the delta function is, too. So, the idea in general is that anytime I have a delta function times a function, so maybe I've got a delta function out here, and I integrate over an interval that has that includes the delta function, so maybe I'm integrating from here to here, then uh, that integral just evaluates the function at the point where the delta function is. Okay, so let's now introduce an integral. This is the integral that will look to you initially like we've gone through a whole lot of work to do something just completely pointless. But trust me, there is a reason for doing it. So let's look at the following integral. I have the integral from minus infinity to infinity of cosine of tau delta of t minus tau d tau. Okay, so I've changed the variable of integration to tau so that I could use t, oops, incorrectly. In my, uh, in my delta function. What I really want here is delta of tau minus t. Okay, got a little uh, carried away and did that wrong. So 
basically, if I graph this as a function of tau, which is now my dummy variable of integration, I've got the cosine of tau, as you're used to seeing. I've got a delta function, which is, say, right here, if this is where t is. Okay? And I could actually uh, change t. I mean, so I might have a different value of t, which would move the delta function to a different point. But then I'm integrating. My limits go from minus infinity to infinity. So as we've just shown, the only place where the delta function is not 0 is going to be where tau is equal to t. So basically then, what we've got is cosine of t. Okay, so again, at this point, uh, when I first saw this, I thought, that's the most pointless thing I've ever seen. You take a function, you put it in this complicated interval times the delta function, you work the integral, and you get the function back. And isn't that amazing? Uh, it turns out that this is important when I'm looking at linear time invariant systems, uh, because if I know what the response of the system is to a delta function, then I can use this funny integral relationship, this whole thing, to figure out what the response of the system is going to be to this function that I would have as an input. So that's, that's why we care about this particular property of delta functions. Now, one last thing, and then we'll be done. This could be any function of tau. It doesn't have to be a cosine. I've used a cosine as the example, but it doesn't have to be. So any function of tau here, and it turns out to be that function evaluated at t. So that concludes this uh, video on integrals with delta functions.